Today you will learn why we put a nail in a regular soldering iron, why we collect cat hair, and why we light a flashlight on a sewing needle. It happens that it is necessary to connect two thick wires, but not everyone can do it properly. Take an ordinary bolt, fix it in a vise, and after making two points in about these places, start drilling the hole straight. And as the drill begins to enter the material, move it a little to the side at an angle. That way we will have two holes in the head. Now put the bolt in the screwdriver and put the wire through the holes. After a little bit of practice, the bolt will twist our wires quickly and firmly, thanks to the rotation in the screwdriver. If you need to cut a watermelon into many pieces for many people, here's how to do it quickly and easily. After you cut off the top, make two perpendicular cuts. Now put it on the side and get four pieces with one cut. Repeat until the watermelon runs out, and in literally 20 seconds you can feed a whole army or one very hungry cat. Modern day cats are too lazy and don't want to catch mice, but there is a way to get rid of mice without the involvement of a cat. All you need is to scratch a little bit of this fur bag to get what we need. It's fur which remains on the comb. We need to collect it with our fingers and put it in some kind of a box. The thing is that the smell of cat's hair by default is not very pleasant to mice, but in order to increase this effect it is necessary to light a match and slightly burn the fur. The burnt fur emits such a strong smell that even the owner of these fibers is easily shocked by the fragrance. And all the mice around, for sure, will run away after smelling it. Our Stefan is certainly not a mouse, but approaching it for a moment, he fell into a stupor and quickly ran to my hands. Place such scent traps in places that you need to be protected from small rodents, and this should work. When we drill metal, the shavings naturally come out of the hole and scatter all over the table, which then need to be cleaned up. But if you attach one or even better two magnets to the workplace near the hole, see what happens. Pieces of metal that come out are immediately caught in the magnetic trap and stick to the magnets and the workpiece itself. Afterwards, it's much easier to remove the shavings by hand and simply remove the magnets from the workpiece. But if you've already made a mess, don't forget about our old life hack. Do you know why Cookie is so sad? It's because our laminate has such gaps between its parts, so what do we do? We need to take a wooden bar or a piece of board, a hot glue and pour a few strips of glue on the wood but not too much. Then glue it to one of the laminate boards. Press down firmly to get a solid connection. It might happen that while you put one part of the glue on the board, the second part will be solid. In that case, after applying it, just warm up all the glue over a fire and quickly glue it on. Now take away the hammer and hit the bar towards the gap. After a few strokes, the gap narrows and the boards fit together tightly. The board should come off the laminate without any problems, if you don't overdo it with the glue. In the end, there will be no trace of an ugly gap and everything may be fixed quickly and free of charge. After unpacking food in a plastic bag, in this case broccoli, when I took it out of the freezer it kept falling out and it made me a little angry. But the next time I made a cut in a package. I made it not all the way through getting such a tail. You can use it to tie the same bag and nothing will fall out. Sometimes you need to attach an electrical cable to a wooden surface, and how lucky you are if you have plastic zip ties and a staple gun like this. With it, you can very easily attach the ties to the fence and the electric wire to them without any problems. If the wire isn't too thick, you can even try to stick it to the fence directly with the staples, but the fastening in this case won't be as strong. 
Many times I've dropped a needle or other very small object and then couldn't find it. And just recently I realized that a regular flashlight can solve the problem. And no, you don't need to just point it at the floor, it won't do much good. The rays of the flashlight should be directed at a very sharp angle to the floor, and then it provokes the formation of a shadow right near the needle, which is much larger than it. A huge shadow is way easier to notice than the needle itself, so you'll find it quite quickly enough. If you have cracked some plastic product and you need to fix it back in a stronger way than just glue, then a simple paper clip will help. Bend it in a straight line and then, clamping with pliers to the nail, wrap the wire around its axis, resulting in this little spring. Now use the pliers to bite each link of the spring, so that in the end, aligning these pieces, you get such rings. Then clamp the nail in a vise and cut it in the half using a small saw. After that, take an ordinary soldering iron, from which you need to take out the copper sting, insert a piece of the nail with a head instead of it. You're probably already wondering what we've came up with. Put the pieces of plastic together, fix them temporarily, and place our rings of wire at the joint of the fragments. Now turn on the soldering iron, wait until it heats up, and use the cap of the nail to lightly press the rings. The heat goes from the soldering iron to the ring, and melts into the plastic and makes a strong connection of its parts. You need to do a few of these fusions throughout the crack, and if you want, you can sand down the irregularities with sandpaper. It doesn't look very impressive, but when we tried breaking the plastic again, we were surprised at how well this method worked.